Hello and welcome to my channel, Boo Snakes and More. Today we're going to be talking about the Power Rangers. So please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And for more videos like this, also watch my other half channel, Any Snakes and Stuff. My youngest son's channel, Henny's Toys and Games. Or my oldest son's channel, Little Chris 10. Now let's dive into the video. Power Rangers, as a franchise, had heroes. Come from all walks of life, but not all characters that got a morpher. Should have had one. One of the most common troops in Power Rangers is the worthlessness of each ranger. Most of them end up in the row by accident. But the lore signals that they were destined to become rangers. And that they are worthy of welding the morpher. However, this isn't true for all of them. After 30 seasons, Power Rangers has introduced dozens of different heroes. Some of them stand out because they absolutely have what it takes to be heroes like Zack Taylor and Jen Scott. But others simply don't. Characters like Jack Howling and Ziggy Grover never truly grew into the hero row. So they feel as if they should have never been given that responsibility. Diana Mitchell wasn't really a warrior. The light speed rangers weren't teenagers with attitude, but trained professionals in different areas. The pink light speed ranger Diana Mitchell became a ranger alongside the rest of her team when the light speed aqua base chose them to serve as the light speed rangers like the rest of her team. She was a talented professional before becoming a ranger. Although Diana still ranks, or Dana still ranks among the most popular pink rangers due to her kindness and her family backstory, she never truly stirred out when it came to batter. The rest of her team was full of brave fighters, but she was more on the healing side as a trained EMT during her season. It's hard to believe she would have been a ranger if her father hadn't been the head of the Lightspeed Aqua Base. Trip was the Time Force's weakest link. Only Trip and Katie have special powers in Power Rangers Time Force. Healing from the future and born on the planet Exaba. Trip returned to the year 2000 to fight Ransilk and his millions as the first non-human Green Ranger alongside the other Time Force Rangers. His alien psychomagnetic granted him psychic abilities and thanks to a gem on his forehead he could even see the future. However, this wasn't a reliable power. Trip's mental abilities made him a powerful tool for the team whenever they actually worked. However, he was way too soft to be a fighter, especially compared to Katie and Jen. Two powerful heroes, Trip should have stayed on the sidelines as an auxiliary member of the team alongside Circuit. The film's Kimberly Hart was a bully. Kim was portrayed by Naomi Scott in Power Rangers 2017. The Power Ra the 2017 Power Rangers film introduced new versions of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, each with a new background. Kimberly Hart, the first Pink Ranger, was a fallen Queen Bee who became ostracized after sharing a former friend's intimate pictures as a former bullion. Although the film discusses Kim's regrets over her actions, it doesn't really go beyond that. The fact that Kimberly crossed someone's trust like that speaks volumes about her character. It makes six sense when considering she's just a teenager, but it doesn't scream noble hero. Nick Russell had a terrible personality. The Majestic Force Rangers are one of the few teams to use magic. A great deal of the Power Rangers' majestic force revolves around Nick Russell. 
the Red Majestic Ranger, and overall main character of the season. The son of Lo Linbo and Newton, two powerful magic users. Nick was destined to bring the forces of darkness down with his light. As a ranger, he accomplishes. However, beyond the fact that he was a was the chosen one, he never acted as a hero. While many other Red Rangers were known for being heroic, Nick was hot-headed, impulsive, and even arrogant. He had a hard time working as a team with Chip, Xander, Madison, and Vita. He even tried to go solo before accepting them. Overall, he wasn't a good ranger or a good leader. Albert Smith stumbled upon the row. Albert has one of the shortest tenures as a ranger ever. Known as the previous Power Ranger Purple, Albert Smith only appeared in World Famous in New Zealand, the 17th episode of Power Rangers Dino Change, Charge, in which he uses the Purple Ranger and Mega, only to shy away from battle immediately. A self-proclaimed adventurer, Albert, has even encountered Bigfoot, and the Omega chose him because of his kind heart. However, he's also a coward against his own wishes. When it came to the punches, he ultimately immediately hid. Thankfully, he ended up surrendering his Omega because he would have been useless in the team. Sky Tate was too obsessed with being the Red Ranger. Sky became the darker rangers in comics. The son of a former SPD ranger, Sky was always eager to show him that he could be just as great. Given this, he joined SPD and always strove to be the best of his team. Given this, he became arrogant too. So when Abinus Cringer gave the Red Rangers title to Jack, Landers instead of him. He threw a tantrum and refused to follow Jack's orders. As time passed, Sky proved he had what it takes to be a ranger, and he was even promoted to Red Ranger once Jack left, and then they became good friends. However, in the series' earliest episodes, he always comes off as petty and childish, always fighting back Jack's decisions as a team leader. Jack Halloween never took his role seriously. Jack Halloween, the Black Megaforce, Megaforce Black Ranger, and Super Megaforce Green Ranger, isn't known for taking things seriously. Instead, he's constantly pestering Gia, the Yellow Ranger, to date him and cracking jokes, even in the darkest times, although this usually lightens the mood. It also shows how little focus he has in battle. Although he has access to some of the strongest legacy hero's powers, Jack is still one of the weakest Power Rangers ever because he can't control his clown class attitude. Although he is hilarious and overall has good intentions, he has never shown the maturity needed to be a hero. Ziggy Grover was part of a criminal group. Before becoming a ranger, Ziggy worked for Fresno Bob, a mobster who sent him on all kinds of missions, which he often failed. Ziggy did this to make money for a poor orphanage full of sick kids, which he wanted to help in any way he could. Given this, even though he was a good criminal, fans knew he had good intentions. Ziggy isn't the first ranger to be a reformed criminal. Rangers like Jack Landers and Z. Gregato turned their lives around, and others like Tommy Oliver and Ryan Mitchell even served as full-blown villains before becoming heroes. However, contrary to these characters, Ziggy is often lazy, clumsy, and even a bit of a coward. He has a big heart, but he doesn't have what it takes to be a warrior. Billy Cranston grew into the role. Billy returned in Power Rangers Cosmic Fury 
as the temporary leader of the team. Bailey Cranston, the first Blue Ranger, is unarguably one of the most popular characters in the franchise. However, fans can't deny he wasn't always that. Instead, he slowly and steadily became the hero. Everyone knows and loves, especially compared with his teammates. Billy was quite weak. Why Jason, Zach, Kim, and Tony were martial artists and gymnasts, Billy was all brains, no muscle. With this profile, he would have been a better IT guy for the team alongside Alpha instead of a core member of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Fortunately, he became very more efficient, way more efficient in batter and conquered his fears as time went by. Justin Stewart was only a kid. Justin is the youngest human ranger ever. A genius lover intellect, Justin Stewart skipped ahead to ninth grade, where he was smarter than some of his classmates. However, this doesn't mean he was ready to be a Power Ranger. Although he was super smart, he was still a little boy, so he wasn't as strong or fast as his peers. Justin was always enthusiastic about his role on the team, but outside his ranger suit, he wasn't as helpful as the other Turbo Rangers, who were all older than him. It's obvious that the franchise wanted to cater to younger audiences when they brought Justin as a ranger, but him as a Power Ranger was a highly unrealistic arc, to say the least. Power Rangers is an entertainment and merchandising franchise built around a live-action superhero television series based on the Japanese Terasuda franchise Super Sentinel. Over the years, the franchise has created popular comics, television shows, films, and theatrical performances, and they have produced numerous games and toys. Thank you for watching this video, and peace out to the next one.